Good morning, everybody. Um, and what a privilege it, it is to be here this morning um, on behalf of Reconciliation Australia. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on, the Darug people, and thank you, Anisandra, for your welcome to country. Um, I am a proud Warbunja woman from the far south coast of New South Wales, and as you can tell by my last name, my father is Yugoslavian, but my mum is Guri. Um, and I am a project officer for Reconciliation Australia. I'm the, only, I'm the only person who's based in Sydney. Our head office is based in Canberra. Um, and I was appointed um, by the board and the CEO to come on board last year, end of October. So um, thank you, Julianne, for inviting me today. And um, what a privilege it is to be here. I actually wasn't involved in the process of endorsing their rap. Um, I came on board just after. Um, but from here on, I suppose, my whole role and my responsibility is to manage all of the New South Wales office base wraps. Um, my, portfolio, my portfolio varies from corporate Australia to not-for-profit organisations to government agencies and I've got about 160 in the pipeline. Um, RA overall have about 360 wraps that are living and that are live. Um, and we have an additional about another 350 that are currently being drafted or developed. Um, so Julianne invited me today to talk a little bit about the RAP program um, and about the impact that it is actually having on the nation. So I've just prepared some notes, so just please bear with me and I'll, um, I'll, get, I'll get into the detail. And I am going blind. <laughs> so the RAP program was established in 2006. Um, it was actually a concept that was created by Corporate Australia. Um, where they were wanting to do more with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the community. And they thought, what can we do? Um, so Corporate Australia actually um, went to the board of Reconciliation Australia. At that, at that time, our co-chair was Mick Dodson, um, a very well-known Aboriginal man from the Kimberleys. And um, they basically put the, put, put the idea to them and then Mick Dodson said, well, why don't we turn Good, in, good, good intentions into actions. So the Reconciliation Action Plan program is ultimately about turning good intentions into actions. Um, and that the board at that time believed that through building relationships, respect and opportunities, and using the organisation's sphere of influence, that was the start of an organisation's wrap journey. Um, we started off with 10 organisations, and like I said, currently now to date, we have about 360. The RAP community is having an impact on this nation and through our recent launch of the RAP Impact Measurement Report 2012, today RA have over 360 organisations who are leading change and who have partnerships with about 350 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations in communities. Currently 95% of employees in RAP organisations believe that the relationship between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, within their organisation is good, which is a great outcome. $15, 15 million dollars worth of pro bono services have been provided to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations across the nation and over 18,500 Aboriginal people have been employed into real jobs. $58.2 million worth of goods and services has been purchased through Supply Nation who are formerly known as the Australian Indigenous Minority Supplier Council. Um, and that is where they're an organisation whose con concept is ultimately to connect the Aboriginal business um, with with the member um, and 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 to use the services um, in mainstream. Currently, fourteen point seven million dollars has been invested into communities to provide Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students with the opportunity to 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 get a good education. More than one point seven million Australians work or study in an organisation who have a wrap. Currently over 200,000 people have actually undertaken some, some form of cultural awareness training, whether it be a workshop or um, actually attending a forum. And 92% of surveyed employees and RAP organisations believe the relationship is important to Australia as a nation. The community portfolio is growing at RA. And as I was saying to Julianne yesterday, I think Family, family. Um, your organisation actually is a, is the only community organisation that I have on my list in New South Wales. So that is a great achievement for your organisation. Um, we we do have other organisations such as Red Cross, Mission Australia, Anglican and Life Without Barriers who have a wrap, um, and they're doing some 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 wonderful and great work. But I think, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. But your manager is it Marie? Ma Maria, Maria, Maria outlined the process of um, 
developing a rap and what it entails and you're right you need to have internally you need to have the culture right first and you need to have your 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 board um, and everybody involved in the process from the start because if you don't have people understanding why it's important to, to develop a rap and what it means for the organization and the community then I, ideally you, you won't be able to achieve anything um, and engaging with the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander community is the most important thing um, so that's that's who I am that's who I work for and that's what RA's um, the strategy is all about and that's that's some of the impacts of the RAP program so far. Um, but look, I'm going to be around until lunchtime, so if you want to have a yarn, please come over and um, introduce yourself and I'd be more than willing to start the RAP process for you. Thank you.